Sarah, chapter 53, verses 4 to 6. Uh, let us read it together. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, seeking by him, and afflicted him. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like the sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has made on him iniquity for us all. Amen. Today's scripture, the title is The Suffering Servant. So, let us think about the Messiah. Do you know the meaning of the Messiah? The Messiah in Hebrew, uh, Messiah means the anointed one. Messiah, anointed one, only those who kings, priests, and prophets, they can get anointed. Messiah is a Hebrew word, but when you translate it in Greek, Christ. Messiah in Greek is Christ. When you think about Jesus Christ, Jesus, which means salvation, you know, Genesis, Exodus, blah, 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 blah. The book of Joshua, you know Joshua also means salvation. And the prophet, his name is Hosea. Joshua, Hosea, the same Hebrew word means, you know, salvation. Jesus, salvation, Christ, the anointed one. Actually, we can say uh, Joshua, Messiah, but Jesus Christ, you know, Christ is a Greek word. Jesus Christ, we know Jesus Christ. So we, somebody, we might, somebody call us, we are Christians. Which means, we are anointed ones. We are king. We are priest. We are prophet. Hallelujah. Those who, anyone who believe in Jesus Christ, we are anointed ones. We are Christians. We are kings. We are priests. We are prophets in the kingdom of heaven. This is a really good message to us. For a long time, people have long waited their Messiah. Their Messiah has been described as the one who has superpower and do his miracles before audiences. I researched the Muslim, the Islam, their religion, their Messiah. Uh, today, uh, Abdul was uh, he, he over there. Was, uh, uh, let me talk about the, your, your perspective, Muslim perspective, the Messiah. I searched it. And in Islam, Jesus was a prophet. They, they also, they say, Jesus is prophet. And Messiah sent to the Israelites who will return to the earth at the end of times along with, let's see, Mahdi. Do you know Mahdi? M A H V I. Okay, with, uh, along with the Mahdi and defeat uh, his name Al Masi Al Dajjal, the first Messiah. Right? Uh, Messiah is uh, uh, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, also they understand the Messiah. So at the end of times, Jesus will be another prophet and he will defeat uh, our <laughs> Adadada or Ahimasi. So, likewise, uh, even though we uh, have different uh, traditions, many people have long waited their own Messiah. One of the, ne uh, the best, uh, yes, this one is. Uh, this one. Uh, one of the, the Netflix best drama series, the name is Messiah, uh, which was released on Netflix on January 1st, 2020, last year. So, uh, you know, the COVID-19, nowadays uh, so many people, they watch TV, you know, the Squid Game or <laughs> likewise the Messiah, because we cannot go to the, watch the movie in a uh, theater. So that's why uh, so many people, they watch this one, the Netflix drama. This man, uh, he was discovered that the place name is uh, the Middle East, uh, uh, I forgot the name, but actually, many people, they call this man Isha. Isha in Islam means 
Jesus, Isha, right? Isha. Yeah, Isha. <laughs> yeah, you're an expert. But actually, the Hebrew word, when you call man, Ish, and then woman, Isha. But Isha, you know, Jesus in Islam. And he showed his miracles and even walked on the water of a Lincoln Memorial Building. You know, this one Lincoln Memorial Building, and he just walked on the water. I have a chance to watch this drama because one of my cousins, he let me watch this movie. Hey, Pastor Young, you had to watch this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was surprised because Messiah, his name is Nisha, he showed the miracles, he healed the diseases, and he walked more the water. Nowadays, modern time. Wow. Because, of, because their followers watched his miracles, they became enthusiastic fans. He even has a political powers to move his, his followers. Yes, this drama is a fiction. But why do modern people still wait their Messiah? So uh, that's why I think uh, the producer, uh, producer Messiah, he decided to produce uh, this kind of drama. But there is a problem. The problem is there is no suffering Messiah. There is no suffering Jesus Christ. He only showed miracles, he only healed the disease, but he never suffered from something. Okay? This is a problem. Our Savior Jesus Christ, he not only showed his miracles, but also he shows his own suffering. So today, I would like to talk about the suffering servant. Yeah, there's a big memorable building. He is just working on the <laughs> water. The servant songs occur the four times in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 42, 49, 50, 52 through 53. In the scripture, the image as a Messiah is different from our thoughts. We might think about the Messiah. He got the superpower, you know, like a superman. He is through to the heaven, you know. But the suffering servant is the Messiah. So, first, the suffering servant Messiah is a human being like one of us. The exiles in Babylon, they might expect their Messiah like a, a superhuman being. At the end of the world, God will send his Messiah and defeat the Babylonian Empire. However, when Isaiah he first received the message from God, Messiah is suffering servant. So let us read Isaiah chapter 53, 4 to 6 again. Ready? Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. They were considered in him, punished by God, stricken by him, and afraid. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Okay, so according to this message, Messiah took up our pain and bore our suffering. It means that Messiah is like one of us. Think about it. one day, Hans, you pray to God, and you, you are expecting, God, please send my Messiah. And Messiah suddenly, he came, came up before you. He got like an angel, you know, got the you know, wings. I'm a Messiah. Are you okay? Can you acceptable? Can you, can you, you're a Messiah? I came here like an angel. I'm a Messiah. Hans, I'm a Messiah. <laughs> what would you do? How about you? Joanne, today you sing a song, very wonderful. I'm a Messiah. I got the angel. I got the wings. What, how's your feelings? I know I have wings. What would you do? Yeah, surprised. Maybe I might, I might say, Go away, devils! Go away, devils! Wow, you kind of E.T. as a career, you know, which, you know, we don't know the, that mean, that, that being. Okay? So let us read the Matthew chapter 8, 14 through 17. Ready? Go. 
When Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he broke off the speech with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Jesus knew Peter's mother-in-law. He knew her disease. If he came to her in the image of angels, I, I am <laughs> Messiah. I am. Might be, you know, uh, Peter's mother-in-law, you know, scary. Go away then. <laughs> Jesus appeared before them as a human being, like one of us. Okay? And Jesus, he touched their, her hand with uh, the Holy Spirit the power of God. When he touched it, the disease left. I'm sure Messiah, he came as a human being, like one of us. Second, the suffering servant could not the crucified the God. Uh, this scholar, William Mortimer, he is a very famous uh, systematic uh, theologian. He wrote this book, The Crucified God. What does it mean, the crucified God? This is a very important concept. You might think about, when I suffer, I'm very painful. Where is God? Where, where is God? Do you listen to my voice? Do you know my suffering? You know, in the book of Job, Job also got suffered. And he asked, Where is God? And he invented this concept when he read the novel. Uh, his name is Ali Wiesel, the Jewish uh, uh, person. Uh, when he suffered the, the communist, uh, the second war, the Hitler, he killed so many Jewish people and he survived it, and he wrote this, this book. And then let me introduce his, his story. According to Ali Wiesel's story of a Jewish boy, one Jewish boy was hung by the Nazis along with the two men. It took half of an hour. 30 minutes for the youth to die. And as the man of the camp watched his torment, and one asked him, Where is God now? Where is God now? Who can help this boy? Where is God now? That time, Bizel, he heard a voice within him answer, Where is he? He is there. He is hanging there with them, with the Jewish boys. That's why Jurgen Moltmann, he interpreted when Jesus Christ, he was crucified, according to the book of Matthew, Jesus, he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Eli, which means, my God, my God, why you forsake me? Where is God? Actually, when he suffered, God was with him on the cross. That's what the concept, the crucified God. When you got suffered, God also suffered with you together. There's, been, there's a very important concept. So, Jesus, but he overcome the death and resurrected. Why? In the place of the cross, God was with him. God also suffered with him. The last concept, the suffering servant, let us consider our sins. And let us read Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. Ready? Oh. We all have issues, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequality of us all. Do you ever wonder why God compared us to sheep in the Bible? There are nine regions. I provide you the nine features. Do you have uh, the paper? Uh, nine features. Oh, no. 
Okay, if you possible, please do read it together. So we have the paper, so yeah, uh, so we, we can provide it together. So number one, let us read it together. Number one, she has no sense of direction. We are like what, like you know, the sheep. We have no direction. You know, this is real news. I've uh, uh, I've searched uh, the one news in Eastern Turkey about uh, 1,500 unattended, unattended uh, sheep fell off a cliff, cliff while the shepherds were eating breakfast far away from the flock. Sheep have no way which one, you know, before them the cliff. They, 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 they don't know over there the cliff. They have no direction. Number two, she are defenseless. She cannot defend themselves very well. They cannot defend themselves. Number three, let us read it together. She cannot get up without help. Sometimes she will turn over their back like a cockroach or turtle with their legs in the air. They're clearly. And there is old there is an old English shepherd term for this. It is called cast it down. And number four, let's read it together. She are uh, emotional and recognize the shepherd's voice. They have a remarkable instinct for knowing the voice of their shepherd. Hey Hans! Maybe you can recognize my voice. Oh, Pastor Yang's voice. She can recognize the voice of the shepherd. Okay? And number five, sheep are not meant to carry burdens. You will never see sheep carrying a pack on their back. Other animals are good for carrying things, but not sheep. They were not meant to carry a heavy load. Okay? Number six, let's, let's read it together. Sheep are content with a bit. So long as it satisfies at the moment, they might you know, stink. You know, you know the, when you when you see the, the sheep, it looks like it's clean, but when you close, filthy and stink. No, dirty, dirty. So they lack discernment and judgment. And number seven, sheep are valuable. Sheep were treated as a prized position in Jesus' day. You were counted as a wealthy man if you owned large flocks because they provided meat, milk, and wool, and they produced offspring. And number eight, together, sheep cannot care for themselves when wounded. When sheep get a wound or bite, they cannot care for themselves. Other animals lick a wound until it heals, but not sheep. They need a shepherd to tend to their injuries. Number nine, sheep are innocent. In the Bible, sheep represent purity and innocence. Wow! Sheep, you know, like, like us, sheep innocent. Sheep dirty. Sheep have no direction. I was thinking about, about the, a flock of sheep. Thinking about. Okay, let me move this. They moving on the road. There's a cliff. Okay. I say, hey! Over there, dangerous! There is a cliff! Stop! Stop! <laughs> they just moving because they cannot understand my voice. So Likewise, we are one of our sheep, you know? We are looking for our desires. We are, we are just looking for the worldly values. And God tried to say, Hey, if you keep following your own desires, you're going to die. You know, over there, you, you, you see the cliff. Please do not go there. But human beings, and not recognize the voice. That's why God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, as a human being, and He came to us and He said, Hey, look at me. Love your God. Love your neighbors. 
believing in a, when whoever believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to go to the kingdom of heaven. Please do not follow your own desire, worldly values. But human beings, we crucify him on the cross. But he resurrected because he is the son of God. Yes, we like a ship, we are moving towards the cliff. The cliff will be the end of the world. We are just moving to eat and enjoy. God might say to us, hey, please do not go there. It's so dangerous. There's cliff. That's why God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us. He had no sin. But Jesus taught us God's commandments. Love your God, love your neighbors. Our fellows, when you suffer, you might say to yourself, when I suffer, where is God? But however, when you suffer, God also suffers together. God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, because of our sins. In order to deliver us, Jesus Christ was Himself crucified. However, Jesus Christ overcame the death, resurrected from the tomb. Hallelujah! We as Christians, we believe in Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in Him, we resurrected from the death. We believe that the death is not the end of our existence. Jesus Christ conquered the death. We are looking for the kingdom of heaven. Let's teach this wonderful story to our neighbors. Let's make the kingdom of God here. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for today's wonderful message, the suffering servant. We like the sheep, we were following our desires. We were moving toward the cliff. Father, please forgive our sins and our ignorance. Please let us open our eyes and ears and then listen to your voice. Let us think of the suffering servant Jesus Christ. Let us pray to God who is also suffering with us. Father, please touch your hand on us and let us overcome our sufferings. Please give us your wisdom to see your kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.